Hey there, good to be with you. Well, earlier today, President Biden called the court's decision a sad day for the court and a sad day for the country, while also calling on Congress to pass meaningful legislation to try to restore some of the things that Roe v. Wade provided. Meanwhile, the implications from this decision will impact tens of millions of women across the country, especially those in several GOP-led states where trigger laws are in effect. Protesters erupted outside the Supreme Court after the justices ruled to overturn Roe v. Wade. I kept hoping for the best, but it's clear that these justices don't care about the majority of Americans and their voices. This is going to be like history. This is just the beginning of, you know, the pro-life generation, you know, being there for women, for the unborn. Writing for the majority, Justice Samuel Alito said the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Chief Justice John Roberts joined the other five conservatives in upholding Mississippi's abortion ban but wrote he would have stopped short of overruling Roe outright. It's a sad day for the court and for the country. President Biden called the decision wrong and extreme. Now with Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. The court's three liberals agree, writing they dissented with sorrow for the many millions of American women who have today lost a fundamental constitutional protection. The court's ruling wasn't a surprise. It had been forecast several weeks ago following a leaked draft indicating which way the justices were leaning. The decision is expected to lead to abortion bans in roughly half the states. This decision is a victory for the pro-life movement and for the generations, generations of Americans who never gave up hope. The ruling puts the court at odds with a majority of Americans. CBS News polling found two-thirds wanted the court to leave Roe versus Wade in place, as it has been for nearly half a century. Now we talked about those trigger laws that will ultimately outlaw abortions in most cases. Well, several abortion providers across the country have either canceled their appointments for today or closed altogether. Meanwhile, happening outside of the Supreme Court today, thousands of people on both sides of this issue continue to pile outside of the high court after this seismic decision. We're here outside of the Supreme Court. I'm Skyler Henry. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Skyler. And our team coverage continues here in Houston. Rallies are planned on both sides of the issue. Melissa Correa joins us live near downtown. Melissa. Hey there, Ron. A rally in support of abortion rights set to happen at 6.30 this evening in downtown's Tranquility Park, which is just across the street from Houston City Hall. This is going to be the latest rally in support of abortion rights. Just last month, thousands of people packed Discovery Green, also in downtown, protesting that leaked Supreme Court draft that suggested today's overturn of Roe v. Wade was coming. In that crowd, Houstonians disappointed in today's reversal. We're talking about women who rallied for a woman's right to choose more than 50 years ago. We're talking about young people who believe the right to abortion comes down to the right to privacy and choice in America. Planned Parenthood, one of the most well-known abortion rights advocacy groups, is pausing abortions until its legal team can figure out the next step here in Texas. Family businesses struggled to keep their doors open and many were forced to close after missing out on federal COVID relief money or when it ran out. One Marietta man allegedly spent millions of taxpayer dollars on cars and luxury. John Shirick explains how he reportedly got rich quick and then lost it all. 
This is just one of the luxury purchases that Atlanta federal prosecutors say a fraudster in Cobb County bought with stolen taxpayer money last year. Money meant for struggling business owners who were trying to stay open through the pandemic. But prosecutors say a con artist fooled Uncle Sam out of millions of dollars in Paycheck Protection Program money and spent $1.6 million of it to buy himself this 9,000 square foot property in East Cobb County this past June. The suspect seen here on his LinkedIn account claiming to be a pilot, Carl Torjagbo. This week, a federal grand jury in Atlanta indicted Carl Torjagbo, accusing him of fraudulently obtaining a total of $9.5 million in PPP money from the government last year. Prosecutors say as soon as Torjagbo got the money, he went to work spending it on himself for homes and for a $118,000 2022 BMW like this one and for an $87,000 2021 Range Rover like this one. During the past two years, we have followed the owners of small businesses across Metro Atlanta who were at risk of going under during the pandemic, unable to get the PPP money that could help them. And unfortunately, all the funds were already depleted. I just have to rely on some of my personal savings account to keep our staff on and to keep the doors open. I was not able to pay my staff. The PPP we got was not enough. According to an NBC News analysis, out of $800 billion in PPP money, fraudsters made off with 80 billion. Think higher mortgage rates and bigger credit card payments, which we'll get into in just just a moment. What's it all about? Well, the Fed hopes the increase will start putting the brakes on inflation, which is running at 40-year highs. Gas, food, prices, you name it, it's all soaring. Investors like the news today. The market's rallying on the Fed announcement. Policymakers weighing future increases while trying to steer around the risk of a recession. Let's tell you what you need to know about all this, starting with Tom Costello. For days, the Fed has telegraphed that it would go big today after acknowledging it should have acted sooner to rein in inflation. Today's three-quarter point rate hike is on top of two smaller hikes earlier this year. We at the Fed understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. We're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down. By raising rates and the cost of borrowing from mortgages and car loans to big business loans, the Fed hopes to cool the economy without pushing it into recession. Inflation now running at 8.6 percent, the highest since 1981, and Americans are getting squeezed. To make ends meet, Louisiana special ed teacher and single mom Christina Seal is now selling her plasma to earn an extra $600 a month. It's something that I have to to do in order to keep my family afloat, in order to make sure that there is enough food to go around and the lights are on and I've got gas in my gas tank. Christina says her monthly bills have nearly doubled. A tank of gas from 40 to $90 a week. Utility bills from 180 to $300. Groceries from 150 to 300 a week. Now she's turning to a local food bank for help. Things just kept going up. Inflation kept going up, up and up until my credit card was eventually maxed out. Cereal peanut butter. At the Loaves and Fishes Food Pantry in Los Angeles, Brenda Hakimian says she no longer feels a part of the middle class. There is either extreme rich or extreme poor and the rest of us just kind of fall through the cracks. Meanwhile, with nearly every American watching more of their paychecks sucked into their gas tank, the national average now 5.01 a gallon, President Biden today accused U.S. oil companies of profiting off the pain at the pump, with oil refining capacity down 3 million barrels a day since 2020. In a letter to seven oil CEOs, Mr. Biden writes, at a time of war, refinery profit margins well above normal being passed directly onto American families are not acceptable. But the the oil industry believes the Biden White House has been hostile as it tries to go green. Six refineries have gone offline, many in need of overhaul to meet environmental standards. The oil industry says U.S. refineries today are running at or near capacity to meet demand. But still, demand is outpacing supply. And Tom, continuing supply chain problems, I know, are one of several factors the Fed says is driving this inflation. Yeah, absolutely. And the COVID lockdowns in China not helping the supply chain. They're also watching the war in Ukraine, driving up prices and consumer demand. And they expect they will raise rates again in July, maybe by another three quarters of a point. This will continue through the year. And unemployment likely to rise from historic lows to 
maybe even above 4% sometime in 2024, Lester. All right, Tom Costello, thank you. Those rising interest rates, as you heard, will likely send mortgage and other rates even higher in coming weeks, pushing some people to buy now for fear of paying more later. Jolene Kent reports in our series, Price. Do if you checked your bank account and suddenly found out you were a millionaire.